Hi everyone, welcome to this menstrual cup virtual workshop. Um, so you probably have been led here because you're interested in menstrual cups. Maybe you used one to success or no success. Maybe your friends have used one or you've just heard all the rage about it. So we're gonna be going through um, how to choose one, how to use one, um, the sustainability, like long-term and all the ins and outs and in between. So hello, um, you probably wanna know what are our credentials? What gives us any authority to let you know how to use a menstrual cup? So we are part of WINGS, uh, College on Hopkins, as you may know, that is dedicated to menstrual equity and in that also making sure that sustainable menstrual products are accessible to people at Hopkins and in the greater Baltimore community. And specifically the great work of sustainability, you know, continued by sustainability directors, Paloma and Neha, and the committee today. And so we're gonna be talking through everything that we've learned, um, either through personal experience or through testimonials to help you on your journey of menstrual cup um, and beyond. So the first thing we're gonna get into is the design of menstrual cups. There's so many out there, so many different designs and it can get confusing, but don't get overwhelmed because we're here to help, help you get the right one for you. So we'll start off going through different factors, talking about cervical height, age and birth, color, and so on. So with cervical height, there are many different cervical heights that a menstruator can have, whether it be high, low, or medium. You may know this from an appointment with a gynecologist, or you may have been able to go through the several different internet proven tests um, to determine your cervical height. So this is something to take into consideration as several different cups might be longer or shorter depending on your cervical height. But generally, if you don't know and you're kind of unsure, we would just say go with the average size that they have if they have multiple different heights because it should be able to work for you. And if not, then this is information you can take forward if you need a new one. Age and birth. So with age, your pelvic floor is, the, the muscles in your pelvic floor are gonna weaken with both age and birth. And so typically if you're under the age of 30, then there'll be a specific size of the menstrual cup that you'll be able to use versus maybe over 30, which will be firmer. So in order to compensate for more weakened muscles, but this also applies for birth. So, you know, regardless of age, if you have given birth before, then you may also experience these weaker pelvic floor muscles, which would lead you to purchase a firmer cup. And so next we have color and cup markings. And this is kind of just up to you, like we said, get cheeky with it, have fun with it. Um, I originally had a pink one. Now I have a clear one. I like saying, you know, how much I am doing to help you keep track of when my period is about to end versus, you know, sometimes I just like having a cute little cup. So it's up to you. Next is bladder sensitivities. So either constantly or during your um, menstrual cycle, you may feel the urgency to pee. And so, a menstrual cup will put pressure on your bladder a little bit. So you may feel like you need to pee more often. And if this is already a concern for you, then we do recommend going with a softer cup as it will apply less pressure. But if it's not, then um, feel free to just go with the one of your choosing. And next we have the stem. So the stem can come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, solid, hollow, grip ring, it just depends on your comfort level. So also have fun with it. Um, Lauren, is there anything in here that influenced the menstrual cup you chose? Um, I actually, when I chose mine, wasn't thinking about any of these things and luckily it turned out okay for me, but I just knew that the Diva cup was a popular cup um, and luckily it worked out. So these, yeah, so like Lauren is saying, these are all things you can consider but ultimately, you know, with knowledge, you can make any of them work for you. Mm -hmm. So next we'll be going into um, some other factors. So starting with the flow, some people already know if their flow is heavy or not. Um, so they're kind of already aware of this. So different cup companies will have different sizes. 
Typically, the sizes will be also attributed to, like we mentioned before, age and birth. But even if you are young and you haven't given birth to any children, then a bigger cup will just be more helpful because you know you have a heavier flow. But keep in mind that you may have heavier flow days, but overall you may experience a kind of meet what would be described as a medium average flow. Um, so keep in mind of that. Um, and a soft or firm cup. So this is can be really important, like we were talking about before with bladder um, incontinence kind of things, but then also with physical activity because a firmer cup will stay up a little better because it is able to help with the grip and the pelvic floors. And so the menstrual, it's to be clear that the menstrual cup will not come out if the vacuum seal is formed. But from my experience, I run a lot. And when I had a softer cup, the cup did travel downwards easier than if I had a firmer cup. So also keep that in mind with how physically active you are. And so with many different cup companies, you know, you'll hear any whole concerns about medical grade and FDA registration. Most menstrual cups are made of silicone and there isn't like an official process or official certification that is typically given to different cups. So we just recommend buying from a reputable company and doing your research. Definitely stay away from any AliExpress, you know, menstrual cups. And then one of the other concerns is, is your vagina too small? I personally started using menstrual cups before I had any penetrative sex, but I wasn't particularly worried about this. But in general, across the board, your vagina can take a menstrual cup, like it can give birth to a child, like it can do X, Y, or Z. Your vagina is not too small, but there are other conditions that can make it increasingly difficult to insert a menstrual cup or even a tampon. Um, one of the things we're talking about is excess hymenal membrane, which is basically when your hym the whole tube vagina looks like this big. Um, one of my best friends had it and it needed surgery to um, remove that membrane. And also vaginismus, which is like constant spasms of the vagina, which will make it extremely painful to insert anything um, and so on and so forth. So we recommend, we kind of say generally, it is gonna be a little uncomfortable the first time you've done it, especially probably depending on how sexually active you have been. So expect discomfort. But like I said with my best friend earlier, when she described inserting a tampon, it was crying. It was extreme pain. Um, so keep these all in mind. And ultimately, we really hope that you'll have access to see a gynecologist if these things are worrying you. But what has been your experience with these, Lauren? Um, so I also started using mine before I had ever had sex. And um, it was definitely uncomfortable at first. There was a pretty long learning curve for me. Um, but I was really, I was really like consistent with trying to make it work. And eventually um, I got it down. And I think the key for me was learning what type of fold to do, which Mariama will probably talk more about soon, but um, that made a huge difference. And personally for you, how long do you feel like it took I don't know whether you want to say months or period mm -hmm. cycles. So you felt comfortable using the metro cup? Probably about three, if I had to guess. Is there anything, any tip that maybe helped? Um, just don't give up right away if it feels like it's not going to work. Um, there might be an easy solution. Like for me, it was the fold. I was trying to do um, the fold they recommended on the package of the cup, which was a C-fold. Um, but then I read about it online and I learned about the tulip fold and that fit better for me. So thank God we are living in a digital age where we yeah. have all this information. <laughs> and yeah, we're definitely gonna get into our experiences and the specifics of how to use a cup in, I believe, the next clip. Aha, good timing. So we're gonna be going through this video by Organic Cup kind of just preface, you know, we're not influencers, but just to be sure, we don't really have any affiliation with them. It's just a really good video. Um, and they're going to be promoting their cup, but this, a lot of this information is just good generally. 
So we'll be stopping in between to, you know, give our little tips and dish about the menstrual cup. We think it's time for a new period of periods. Every beginning can be difficult and it may take you a few periods to get the hang of your menstrual cup, but follow our guide and you'll soon become a dedicated cup convert. Before using your Organa cup for the first time, you should sterilize the cup in boiling water. Make sure you use enough water and that the cup doesn't burn on the bottom of the pan. After three to five minutes, the cup is sterilized and ready to be used. Step one, insertion. Use warm. Um, to pause here really quick. So yeah, you definitely, we mentioned this earlier, but definitely wanna boil it before um, to get it all clean and stuff. And one thing that's really good about my ever cup, which we'll be later talking about is different cup companies may have a pouch that you'll be able to microwave your menstrual cup in water with to be very, to be a lot more dorm friendly. Or if maybe you don't have a dedicated pot in your house to use to clean the menstrual cup. Yeah, so Lauren, would you like to add anything? Um, yes, you, I have a dedicated pot. <laughs> and yeah. That, yeah, for that. Mine did not come with a pouch. I would love a pouch. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'll look into when this one is done, getting one with that does have a pouch. Yeah, I definitely got a little talking to when I was just using a regular old pot. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, on with the video. Warm water and a mild perfume-free soap such as Organa Wash for sanitizing your hands and cup. Find a comfortable position. You can either squat down, put one foot on the toilet, sit on the toilet, or simply stand up. You'll quickly find out what works best for you. There are various folding. Okay, on insertion, one of the things that I find really helpful is getting in a deep squat. I don't know, I feel like it just opens everything up and makes it a lot easier. So if you wanna try like sumo squatting, I find it very helpful. Lauren, do you have a preferred insertion position that you would like to share? I actually do it standing up with like one leg on the toilet, kind of like one knee up sort of. Um, also, sometimes I just do it like on the toilet as if I were inserting a tampon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, also you can do it in the shower. I feel like if you if you feel a little nervous or if it can provide a little more relaxing atmosphere. So mm -hmm. it folds, as you've been mentioning. Methods. Experiment and find your favorite. For a punch down fold, push the rim down to the base and pinch the cup together so it doesn't pop open. The punch down fold provides the smallest diameter, thereby making insertion easier. For a C fold, fold organa cup in half lengthwise. For a sevenfold, fold organa cup closed and bring one top corner down diagonally to the opposite bottom corner. It's important to completely relax when inserting organa cup. Insert the folded cup into your vagina. When the entire cup is inside, simply remove your fingers and let it pop open. Make sure the cup is unfolded by feeling around the base of the cup. It should be round or oval. If you feel any dents or folds on the base with your finger, it means that it is not unfolded. Gently hold the base of the cup, not the stem, and try to rotate it from side to side to ensure it is sealed. When in place, try to pull the stem a bit. If you feel some resistance, a vacuum has been created and the cup has been placed successfully. You may want to use water or water. Lauren, do you have a fold of choice? Um, I do what they described as the punch down fold. Um, but I learned it as the tulip fold. Um, so I like that one because it has the smallest diameter and it's it's the easiest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, also, do you have a way that you know that, you know, it's secure, the vacuum seal has formed? Um, pretty much like they described, you kind of, like when you feel the base of it, you want it to feel like it's um, the shape it was before it was in there. <laughs> um, so that's also a learning curve, but Sometimes you can kind of feel it like pop open. Um, that's a good way to know without even feeling. But um, a lot of times, if I feel like it's not unfolding properly, I like rotate it a couple times and then it does. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, for a long, like for now, I kind of just go by the pop because I've always been able to kind of feel the pop. Um, what was I asking? Oh yeah. And then when I was learning it, the punch song flow was actually called the taco. So <laughs> I, I don't, there's a lot of different flows, a lot of different names. Um, and that also can factor into what cup you buy because some menstrual cups, they're softer. So you can roll it into a tampon if you're using a tampon and that's kind of what you prefer. Also in practicing, um, you can use, if you have lube, you can use lube. If you're inserting, you can use water. I personally, when I was like, I was like 15. So I kind of, you know, I have big brain energy. So what I did was I practiced inserting after I masturbated because I'm like, it's already lubed up. So that's when I like would practice in between my periods. So that's also another DIY um, idea. <laughs> For the cup. Um, any other things you want to talk about insertion, Lauren? Um, doing it in the shower helps a lot because it's like it's wet already. Um, also, sometimes I rinse it first so it has like a little bit of water on it. That helps. There's a lot of different subtle things you can do that make it a lot easier. Yeah, definitely. If it's not the period, blood will help. Yes, so. definitely. <laughs> So also keep that in mind too. Okay, we'll continue. Based lubricant to make insertion easier. If using a lubricant, simply apply a tiny amount to the rim. When inserted correctly, Organicup is entirely leak free. And no, it won't fall out. Due to the vacuum, the menstrual blood won't come into contact with air, meaning no odors, ultra hygienic and antibacterial. Step two, wear. About one fourth of the fluids absorbed by a tampon are natural and necessary vaginal secretions. Organicup only collects, thus eliminating irritation and dryness while ensuring the natural pH balance is kept intact. Organicup can contain three to five times as much as a regular tampon, which means most people just need to empty Organicup morning and evening. That means no period interruptions during work, school, sports, dancing, swimming, sleep, or you know, whenever. Step three. Hey, Lauren, how often do you like wear or how often do you know you can wear your menstrual cup? Oh, um, I usually change it in the morning after I get up and then before I go to bed. But also if I take a shower that day, I change it in the shower. Um, mm -hmm. That generally works for me. Even when my cycle's pretty heavy, it holds so much that I, I really don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I, yeah, I've been wearing my menstrual for like five years and I'm a little old and so um, I've only ever had it pop once and it was my fault completely um, because I knew I needed to change it. I was just being lazy because I knew like that was my heaviest day and what actually happened was I felt a pop and I felt like a rush of blood because at that point it was game over. It was overfilled. So um, that's kind of a way that I've been able to say, like, if it ever were to come to that point, it hasn't in the five years since, but that's how I kind of know. Um, and I, yeah, I, if I'm being good, I'll change it like morning and evening because my flow is kind of lighter now. Um, but I'm honestly very lazy. I feel like once you learn where you become a lot more complacent. So mm -hmm. I'm honestly just doing it once a day. And then I'll just wait like 24 hours and it's all good. Mm -hmm. Mine also popped once. Um, it was overnight. I think I just like didn't put it in close enough to bed. I was just like, oh, this is fine. And it was, it was too much. <laughs> yeah. No, but, I mean, the fact that for all of the time I've been using it, it's only leaked once compared to like using tampons, which I did before this, how often that leaked. Um, really shows how much easier my life is now when I'm using it. No, yeah, like typically if I like use pads, because I use reusable pads for a little bit kind of until recently, I would like be able to remember what days. And now I'm like, oh my God, my period started like a week ago. That's kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see kind of as, after you get over the learning curve, you get real cocky. So we'll, we'll move on to removal. Mm -hmm. Removal. 
Use warm water and a mild perfume-free wash, such as OrganaWash, for sanitizing your hands under clean running water. Being relaxed is essential for the removal of your cup, so find a comfortable position. We suggest you try squatting down, sitting on the toilet, or putting one foot on the toilet. To remove the cup, pull the stem while using your stomach muscles to push Organa Cup downwards until you can reach the base. Gently squeeze the base to release the vacuum and slide the Organa Cup out, gently rocking it from side to side. Empty the cup into the toilet. Rinse the cup with water and mild soap. Remember the air holes. If you don't have access to clean water, simply use toilet paper and rinse when you're back home. Or use a sanitizing wipe. Most people never have to because of the 12 hour capacity though. Once the cup is clean, you can reinsert it. If your period is ended, boil the cup for three to five minutes or use a sanitizing wipe such as Organa Wipe and store in the original Organa Cup cotton bag. Tips and facts. Okay, you know, Lauren, dish to us, how is removal for you? What have you learned? What do you use? Um, so the vacuum seal, like, makes it for me where I don't just want to, like, pull it straight out because I feel like that would be a mess. Um, I know a lot of people do that, but I kind of, like, pinch it a little bit to break the, um, the seal. Um, not all the way, but just a little bit, and then it comes out a lot easier. And I just kind of like carefully pull it out and I hold it there for a second um, just to let it like, like the cup, like collect whatever is coming down and then I dump it out. Yeah, yeah. Like mm -hmm. you, like, I feel like I never really, like I like I'd heard of Kegels, mm -hmm. but I really kind of came to learn what a Kegel can do <laughs> when I was using the cup. You kind of just like push. It's, it's like a mix between if you're trying to pee or poop and then you have it and you like she's saying break the seal and dump it out um you can use i'm not gonna go on the any soap like not maybe every soap but you can use a lot of different soaps i've used hand soap body soap Thank you. try we try dish soap dish soap gets them just make sure it's not any soap on it when it's going back in um and you feel free like i know some people maybe like to boil it halfway through maybe at the end of the night it's pretty much up to you but we do recommend after each period, like in between each period, to boil it and get it all nice and clean um, for you to use. I feel like there was, do you have anything else? I'm trying to remember the last thing I wanted to mention. Um, no, I think that, I think you, that like, it's one of those things where it seems complicated and hard at first, but then once you actually start doing it, you're going to be like, oh my God, I love this. Like, and you're going to want to refer all your friends to it. And you're just going to wonder like what you did before you used the menstrual cup. At least that was my experience. That was a past life for me. It was a whole different time. <laughs> oh, I remember. So, and, you know, for a lot of us, you know, maybe coming into college, you know, you're living in dorms where you can't like immediately dump and there's a sink right next to you. So one of the things that somebody I knew who had kind of like that dorm bathroom situation is um, they would remove the cup and then wipe it with toilet paper mm -hmm. to get it like pretty clean and then be able to take to the sink and kind of wash it out. Do not feel ashamed to wash your mesh with out of the sink. Like, you know, blood is blood. And that's, oh, this is also something I wanted to mention. You will touch your period blood at some point using the menstrual cup. And I think it's important to address that. For me, I was, I am very much like one everything vagina, but talking to other people, it's very much, you know, like you don't even realize how much you've been, you how much you've internalized how dirty your you think your period blood is versus like if you got like a paper cut or like a nose blood. Um, because you know, there's clots in it, you know, I guess it doesn't look like well, all types of blood. But just know that your period blood is blood and it's not like dirty, it's not nothing. And you're gonna touch it, and that's okay. It's okay. Um, Lauren, do you have any experience of having to realize that, maybe be okay with that kind of from that perspective? Um, I will say I do that same thing where you like dump it in the toilet and take a piece of toilet paper and like clean it and then bring it to the sink. Um, also washing it in the shower you can always do very easy 
mm-hmm. way to circumvent um, if you're living in like a dorm with stalls. Um, and then yes, you will touch your own blood. Um, for me, I actually, I never really had a problem with that. Like, I know, I know it scares some people. I hope that eventually um, you get used to it, but it's, it's not as bad as you'd think, I think. No, yeah, the convenience kind of overrides it. Like, you're like this was so convenient. Yeah. You know, let me just put it in for another 10 to 12 hours. Um, so now let's see, let's see what they want to give us for tips and facts. The cup sits below the cervix in the vaginal canal. If the cup sits too high, you might experience leakage. There's a big variance in the size and shape of the vagina. A recent study determined the average vaginal canal to be six centimeters deep, but it can span from four to 10 centimeters. All women have differently positioned cervixes and it varies how high or low the menstrual cup is placed in the vagina. If you feel the stem and find it uncomfortable after a couple of tries, you can cut it shorter. Did you know that the average amount of bleeding during an entire period is just two to four tablespoons? But again, everyone is different and the amount of flow greatly varies from person to person. One study measured a range from just a single drop to half a liter. Until you get 100% hang of it, you may want to wear a pad or penny liner so you don't have to worry about accidental leakage. 350,000 plus women already made the switch to Organicup and nine out of 10 who try it continue to use it. If you're still experiencing any issues after trying the cup. Okay, so that was their like tips and facts. Definitely the panty liner tip is great. And I feel like maybe if you're having a menstrual cup with a stem, the first time you use it, it'll be helpful to kind of see where the stem lies. And for me, it was after a few uses, I realized I kind of want to cut the, the stem a little bit. Just make sure you aren't cutting the base. But Lauren, do you have any other things that came up in your mind when you're watching the tips and facts section? Um, I, I think that also another thing to be aware of is like cervical height changes even like if you're the same person, like your cervix is at different heights at different points in the day or your cycle. Um, so the stem might be like, whoa, this is way too long. And then it'll be like, wait, that's, that's a perfect length. So, um, so for me, I, I think I started using my cup when my cervix was like really low and I was like, uh, I will probably want to cut the stem, but then the vast majority of the time, other than that, it was like the perfect length and I didn't end up cutting it. Um, so, you know, like it, you'll be able to work with whatever you have, like, um, you'll get used to it and yeah, you'll, you'll learn. Yeah, so yeah, you'll you'll get the hang of it. You'll get the hang of it. Okay, okay so now that we've covered kind of all of the things that we can share and knowledge we can impart to you about the menstrual cup, we're gonna be talking about other sustainable alternatives as they can maybe help your journey into using the menstrual cup and also helping um, sustain while you use the menstrual cup. So like I said, you can also use organic pads and tampons, as you may know. They are definitely more expensive, but as um, menstrual cup companies aren't required to report the ingredients or what's really put in, um, if you just feel more comfortable knowing this is it's either 100% cotton or whatever the company wants to report, we definitely want to recommend that to you. And so moving into reusable options being reusable co- cloth pads, and period panties. So starting with period panties, they can be used for a multitude of days and flows. They've designed some to be heavy flow, um, light flow, etc. Some people feel comfortable using it all the time and some just wait to their lighter days. Um, I've never used a period panty. I want to, ooh, plumless go with tea. Yeah, so I use Thinks. Um, and like, yeah, at first I was having trouble because I got like the standard hip hugger ones that they recommend. And so I was like having some leakage problems, but then like I would try to plan it so I'd use it on my lighter days, but then I ended up getting like their heavier, like, I don't know if they call them super or something, but like the heavier flow ones. And like now I don't have to use any um, like single use products for my period. And so I like it, but at the same time, right? Like the washing does 
take a little bit out of you because you have to sit down at night and be like, scrub at it. So yeah, menstrual cups. Yeah, thank you for your personal testimony. But yeah, like period panties definitely on the rise. Like we said, glad we're living in the digital age. Tons of YouTube videos. I love watching the YouTube videos of people trying them. So you can kind of see what company and size would work for you. And then moving on to reusable cloth pads. This is something that I've, I use for about four-ish years, which I kind of recently discontinued. So basically, you know, it's your basic pad just with cloth. So you can clean, you clean them, you can clean them by hand. I personally clean them by hand after each use and then threw them into the washing machine when I was done. And they would hold up for like, I think my first pair held up for like three years. It was the only reason I just got rid of them was just because I was like, it's been three years. Let me just get some new ones. But I highly recommend them because originally I switched from pads to Metro Cup, which is kind of a big jump for me. I liked having reusable cloth pads because I would wear them at night. Um, so it kind of, at the time I was like, my vagina needs a little break. So it was a nice little in between. Um, any other testimonials about them? Okay, so you can use them along with or as you're transitioning into it, up to you. So now we're just kind of getting kind of gonna get into why we started, you know, how things have kind of been going with me and Lauren and our menstrual cups. And so Lauren, feel free to give us, let us know how you've been since using the menstrual cup. Yeah, so um, before I started using it, I used tampons because I was on the swim team. So pads weren't really an option for that. Um, and I wanted something that would, that I wouldn't have to worry about changing as much and I could wear when I was swimming. Um, and also it would help me save money, I figured, because once you buy a menstrual cup, you don't have to buy tampons ever again. Um, and so, yes, there was a big learning curve for me. I wasn't doing the right fold at first. Um, yeah, for a while I would wear like a pad or like a penny liner with my menstrual cup because I also didn't always get the seal right. Um, and that, that makes it leak. Um, but eventually I figured it out and now I use it pretty much every period. Um, I still have pads and tampons that I have on hand, just either if someone else needs them or like sometimes I just don't feel like using my menstrual cup um, and I, I just prefer to use a pad or a tampon instead. But there's really no reason why I just sometimes like to switch it up. Um, and yeah, I think it's been a good it's been a good decision for me. It's definitely my favorite thing to use on my period. Um, and I, I would recommend it to anyone. Thanks for sharing. And, you know, like Lauren was saying with the learning curve, definitely feel like you can go at your own pace. You know, just because you're using a menstrual cup doesn't mean you can't use disposable product. If that's what's more comfortable to you, that's the ultimate goal in all of this. <laughs> you know, in the patriarchy, just, just help some women out. Um, so like I was kind of going through my suitability revolution when I was 15 and discovered the menstrual cup, ordered it with my birthday money and <laughs> it came. And what I did was I ordered it. So it came at the end of my period. So I was like dedicated. I was like, the, when my period starts again, I'm going to be able to use it. So I had practiced the whole month so it was a little more familiar to me when my period did come because I was kind of familiar with the pop and how to remove it. I was risking it all. I didn't put any, any panty liner under it. Um, I would definitely recommend. And ever since, I feel like it's been really good. I've tried different companies, kind of seen how a firmer cup definitely makes me pee more, but it stays in during the runs. Um, and having reusable cloth pads have been really helpful. If I'm traveling, like sometimes it may be if you're doing international flights, I just use disposable pads. I find it easier because I'm like, I don't have to worry about what's going on down there. So I definitely, that's something I kind of incorporate. And so hopefully with that, you kind of just learning more um, and hopefully you just can either spread this to somebody or you can just use this to maybe look into the research on your own. But we just want this to be a helpful tool regardless. 
Um, so is there any questions that we have? I have a question. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> if you're interested in getting a cup and it's from, uh, I guess this is the next slide though. <laughs> if you're interested in buying a My Ever Cup from Wing, where can we find more information about that? Yes, so our Great Sustainability Committee is running not only consultations, but also have forms you can fill out to let them know what you wanna be using. So like I said, with the consultations, feel free to fill out the form with the link included in this video to, in order to get a consultation done. So not only can you watch this great video, but you can get that one-on-one -on -one service, you know, from all these great educated, um, women and know more about how we can help you specifically in getting it. And you can buy my Ever Cups half off from Wings. Okay, those $30 out of my birthday money took a hit, took a hit, but you can get a test from $10 to $15, depending on whether you want the pouch or not. And, you know, even though I said more influencers, we kind of are because we have an affiliate code with <laughs> Lena, <laughs> Lena Wings for $5 off your order for Lena Cup. I just wanted to ask one question before oh, we go yes. um, to both you and Lauren. Um, since you've used the menstrual cup, do you feel like the pain has changed? Like, do you think that's increased or decreased or stayed the same? Mm -hmm. Good question. Lauren, that's wanna... a good question. I, I've been thinking about this all the time because sometimes I'll put my menstrual cup in and then all of a sudden my cramps will start and I'll be like, is it the cup <laughs> like doing that? Um, and so sometimes I'm like, I don't know, is it the cup? And I'll, I'll like put a pad on. Oftentimes they stay, sometimes they don't. I don't really know what's going on. Um, like I definitely get cramps with pads or tampons too. So I, I can't tell. I'd be interested to see if there were studies on that. Yeah, I definitely, this is because I forgot to mention this. So before, like I said earlier, before I started using the Muncher Cup, I wasn't sexually active. So I definitely felt discomfort like every time I inserted the cup. And after I started using like penis vibrators, I still felt like that discomfort when I put it in. But once I actually had penetrative sex with a human being, I like didn't feel that discomfort anymore when it was when it was inserting. So that was my experience. But like Lauren said, you know, it's different. And mm -hmm. sometimes it may feel like I'm having a bad day and this cup is making it worse. So Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's actually the cup causing any pain like while it's in, but sometimes I I feel like I just want to take it out and put a pad on. If I have really bad cramps or something, I'm like, nope, nothing. I just want a pad. Yes, yeah, so I've heard that like one of the pros to buying sustainable or like organic um, tampons and products like that is that it supposedly like reduces your cramps. Hmm. Um, so I, I was just wondering if that was the case for the cups too. It, it could be, I don't know. You know, I wouldn't put it past it. You know, it kind of does wonders. So let's just add that to the list. <laughs> okay, any other questions? I feel like that was it. But yeah, I hope everybody has a great morning, afternoon, night, wherever you are. Thank you so much for hanging out with us in this menstrual cup workshop. And good night, everyone.